Hi, good evening. Welcome to Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained. Number 16, entitled Tzimtzum, Contraction of the Infinite Light, Part 2. Welcome, thanks for coming. And all of you watching online, welcome. Uh, I hope we'll all be inspired. So actually today is a special day. It's Yudalit Kislev, the 14th of Kislev. It's the 14th of Kislev, which is the anniversary of the Rebbe and the Rebbetzin. The Rebbe once said this is the day that connected him with us and us with him. Because when the Rebbe married the daughter of his predecessor, eventually he became the next Rebbe, became our Rebbe. So it's amazing, it's 25 years after the Rebbe's histalkos and Gimel Tammuz, and the Rebbe's uh, impact from his soul is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, 25 years ago there were about 1,200 shluchim, today there are over 5,000. It's amazing and historic. Also there's a special day coming up, the 19th of Kislev, which is the day of the liberation of the Alter Rebbe, of the founder of Chabad, the first Chabad Rebbe. Uh, his liberation from Tsarist prison, um, from uh, false accusations, and it's also dubbed as the Rosh Hashanah of Chassidus. So therefore, this coming Tuesday, uh, December 17th, 2019, there will be a Fabrengen here in, our, in uh, the dining room in our synagogue, 293 Neptune Avenue. Men, women, everyone is invited. There will be a full meal celebrating this special day. That's Tuesday, December 17th, 8 p.m. here at the Young Isla of Brighton. Once again, these uh, classes are sponsored by Chabad of Kingsborough. If anybody wants to uh, sponsor a class, go on to ChabadKingsborough.org and click on Donate. Also, if you like the class, please uh, press like. Remember to subscribe. Okay, so in class 15, last class we discussed the reason for Tzimtzum, that since Hashem, God Almighty, is totally infinite, therefore the energy that animates from Him, as we call the light, that animates from Him is also infinite. So therefore from infinite energy, how could you create a finite world, a finite creature, a finite planet, a limited planet, a limited creature? From unlimited energy, how could you create limited energy? There's an infinite gap between finite and infinite, between gvul and bligvul, between limited and unlimited. Therefore, there must be a tzimtzum. There must be a contraction of the infinite light. Today, we'll discuss another reason for the tzimtzum. And we're actually going to go to the source which the revelation of the concept of Tzimtzum is a revelation of the great Arizal, the great Kabbalist, one of the greatest Kabbalists of all times, one of the greatest, the Arizal. So in Eitz Chaim, his students wrote his works, it says like this. And I'm going to translate, pre, uh, I'm going to translate uh, directly uh, into English. You should know that before the creation was created, before anything was created, any creatures, the, the supernal light filled the, the whole existence. And there was no empty space. Everything was full of the infinite light. Okay? Similar to that, it says in Eitz Chaim, written by Reb Chaim Vital, which was a major student of Dari, of Darizal. You shall know that in the beginning of everything, in the beginning of everything, there was the whole existence was the light, which was called Ein Sof, the infinite, and there was no empty space. But everything was the infinite light. In Chsidis, when it brings down the Yitzchayim, in some places it says the following words, that since the infinite light was 
was was full full of the full, was since the infinite light was um, as he says filling the whole existence memale kolamitzis therefore and this is the lashon this is the the word that says in chesedus loyhaya mokim lamidas elamis there was no place for the standing for the existence of the worlds. For instance, take a look in Tafresh Peites. See from Amarim Tafresh Peites, page Shin Bam Gimel 343, you'll see that. And in Tafshin Chaf Aleph, see from Amarim Tafshin Chaf Aleph, page 29, Chaf Tes. So, what does it mean there was no place for the worlds? Obviously, before creation, the space itself is a creation, especially physical space. We're talking now about physical space. There's no physical space. So the simple uh, translation, if you translate these words simply, it means that Hashem's infinite light was everywhere, so there was no place for what? For anything else. We're thinking in physical terms which did not, does not apply at that level at all. So it's explained really orally by the mentors of Chassidus, the teachers of Chassidus, the students of Chassidus. Take a look, for instance, Chabad.org, Rabbi Eli Rubin. You could take a search, Tzimtzum, T-Z-I-T-Z-U-M, on Chabad.org, you'll see Rabbi Eli Rubin. I believe it's called Creation Impossible. I believe it's there. So he brings from Rav Melech Tzvibel, all of Hashem, the following. Also, in the, in the, in the book that the Yeshiva Kva Chabad gives out every year of uh, different essays from students and teachers, etc. So in, in the 14th booklet, You'll find the Bzalma Gop and say also the, the, the similar concept of the following, which I'm going to explain. Which means that what means there was no place for the world. So in Yiddish, you say it's in art. It's totally out of the question. When the truth of godliness is revealed, there's no possibility for anything else. And I want to explain that. This is what I want to explain tonight. But first, a few sources for a little, the, more, the more advanced that are listening. A few sources. Uh, and for those that are beginners, give me please two, three minutes and we'll get back. So one thing is, take a look in Ayn Bays, Tofresh Ayn Bays, Page, I'm sorry, in the end of chapter 128, Kuf Ches, on page uh, 249, on the old print, you'll see that he, he, he connects this light, this infinite energy, with the concept of what it says in Pere Hay in Tanya, that that he is the only existence and there's nothing else. Take a look there. Then you could take a look also on Tofresh Samach, the beginning of page 45. It speaks about the infinite light before the Tzimtzum. In the infinite light, it's felt how. It's felt very much, very strongly, the source, which is God Himself, how He is the only existence, there's nothing else. And this is the concept of Bittl, that is nothing else besides God. As the song in Russian goes, Nyet, Nyet, Nikavo, Kromi, Vo, Adnavo. And we're going to explain this according to Tanya. Shara Yichud Ve'amuna, chapter 3, 
which also for those that want to look at the references that I'm ta- saying now. So basically, towards the beginning of chapter 3 in Shara Echid Vamuna, look at the line that begins Hamaitziyoi. You'll see it says, Efes bil ade be'emes. That there's nothing else besides besides the uh, the the energy that's creating the world. Now take take a look at Pedic Lamed Hay, the thirty fifth chapter, and you'll find almost the same words. The F is talking about Aiden Sof, the infinite light. Page eighty eight. The Ephes Bilade Mamish. Here it says Ephes Bilade Beemes. Nothing else besides him, literal, uh, f- 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 really, in truth. And here it says Ephes Bilade Mamish. There's nothing else besides him, Mamish, literally. So it's almost the same words. So I'm based on all of this, I'm going to explain the following. To, we have to introduce what does this mean? We have to introduce the concept of what does this mean that in the infinite light, when God's truth is is revealed, nothing else could exist. What does it mean? Look, I exist. You exist. You exist. Why, if I exist, if God exists, nothing else could exist? Why is it so? So we'll explain the way it's explained in Tanya over there, chapter three, and at greater length. In Tofresh Mem Gimel, near Chanukah, Tofresh Tanur Rabban near Chanukah, soon as Chanukah, yeah, page forty. So we'll explain, and this is generally a very important concept. Chassidus, what I'm going to explain here, very general, very uh, popular. But we'll try to explain it very well. It should be well understood. The concept of bittel, that the worlds really are, and every creature is nullified before God, and the way it's before the tzimtzum, it's even stronger. We're not going to go into the differences. We just want to introduce the concept of understanding how the only true existence is God. The truth is that it's also in Rambam. I forgot about that. And I'm going to do what I usually don't do. I'm going to run for 10 seconds. Leave it. Don't take, shut off the video. 10 seconds and get a Rambam. To remember we have to remember that the Torah is all one it's all one Torah the Rambam was one of the greatest sages so what he writes in his beginning of his book very similar to what I'm going to explain now what Chassidus explains let's start with our Rambam Excuse me for that uh, short wait. You didn't touch the video, right? Okay. That good. Okay. Oh. So, Hilchas is said that right at the beginning, the laws of foundations of Torah, chapter one, halacha four. This is what the what the prophet says. Hashem. The God is MS is true. Who levade He's the only true existence. Vein la achar MS can be told say, and there's nothing else as true as His truth. Vuhu shatere meres. This is what the Torah says. Ein oid milvade. There's nothing besides Him. What do you mean? This whole world. Kloimar. It means to say. There is, it means to say that there is no true existence like him besides him. There's nothing as true of an existence as he is. Okay. Now what does that mean? <laughs> Why? Why do we say that? Uh, how do we explain that? How do we understand that? So this is explained the Chassidus at great length. So, it's explained, as I said, in, in Tanya, Shari'chid Vamuna, 
chapter 3, and at greater length in Mem Gimel than Hanukkah. Tafresh Mem Gimel, page 40, and in many places. So, it explains the, dif- the difference between when man, quote unquote, creates something and how God created the world. And there's a major difference. When man creates something, let's say he takes a. It's very simple. He takes a, a piece of silver and makes a, uh, makes a goblet out of a piece of silver, a kois, a cup. Yeah. Or it was, you have a table here, bench. Take a piece of wood and you make a bench. He, he didn't create anything. He didn't create anything new. This was a piece of wood before. He shaped it differently with the metal, with the silver. Also, he uh, heated the silver, melted it, put it in a different shape. Nothing new is here. Or this great artist created, created a painting. Nothing new. He has a God-given talent of art. And he, is, and he, he has a special way how he paints the paint on the canvas that it comes out of this beautiful painting. The paint was here before, the canvas was here before. He did not create anything new. By the way, in 2019, even the concept of cloning, you also you need a cell. You need a first cell to clone from. And you need whatever it is, to nourish it, to have, let it grow. But from nothing, nobody could create from nothing besides God. So since the, the artist did not create really, creation means, as the Ramban, the Nachmanides explains in, in right in the Genesis, right in the beginning, that Barab, creation means something from nothing, ex nihilo. So since... That's what creation means. But an artist does not really create. He takes paint and he takes canvas and he combines it in a very special, beautiful way that this art comes out. Since nothing new is created, therefore, the piece of art could be hanging in the museum for centuries and centuries when the artist is long dead. Why? Because he did not make anything new. He took paint which existed before, canvas existed before, and he just combined it in a very special way. Truth, this same truth, you could say about anything. The most brilliant computer, the most brilliant rocket ship, whatever it is, is, is combination of many, many, many different things under certain circumstances, different chemicals, etc., that, that cr- create, quote-unquote, this new object. But nothing truly was created. When God created the world before creation, nothing existed besides God. So Hashem brought our, our world into existence from nothingness. The example that's given to this in the Tafnish from Gimel is like this. When a person throws a stone into the air, what happens? The stone's going to fly for half a minute, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And then it's going to start falling again. What happens? A stone does not fly. A bird flies, stones don't fly. Stones fall to the ground, that's the nature. Why is it flying? Because it is a different force, there's an external force from the human being that's pushing it and throwing it to fly, forcing it against its nature. The nature of the stone is to fall to the ground. And the human being, since he threw it upwards, so that force of the human being, is that energy and force of the human being is forcing the stone to fly against its nature. So as long as that force is there, as long as that energy of the human being is still in the stone, the stone flies. But after 10, 20, 30 seconds, the, the, that energy evaporates, finishes, so the stone becomes like all stones, falls back to the ground. Why? Because the only, it's called a chidush, it's a novelty, stones don't fly. Why is this stone flying? It's the human being that brings a novelty into the stone. It brings a chidush, something new, novist, a, a new thing into the stone that the stone flies. So as long as this external force is there, the stone flies. But as soon as that external force evaporates, the stone is like all other stones and it falls to the ground. 
And therefore, for the stone to fly, that external force has to be constantly in the stone. So the same way, since Hashem God Almighty created the world from nothingness, meaning it's a total novelty, the world on its own before creation did not exist. It was nothing. The reason why it's here now is because it's forced into existence by the, by the Creator, by the force of the Creator. Therefore, that force has to constantly be in creation. The artist that painted the painting does not have to continue painting it. He could even uh, die and, 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 the, and the piece of art is hanging in the museum for centuries. Doesn't matter why, because the painter did not create anything new. He took things, objects that existed before, and combined them in a special way. But Hashem, when Hashem created the world, He created it from nothingness, and it basically, its whole existence is totally new. Its whole existence does not, it, it does not have its own existence from its own. Its whole existence is from Hashem, from God Almighty, from this force creating it. That's why it's in existence. The only reason is because it's forced into existence by the divine force. So that divine force, that divine energy has to constantly be in the world, creating the world constantly. And if that force is withdrawn, for a split second, the world turns back to its origin of nothingness, God forbid. So therefore, continues the Rabbi Rashab here in Tafresh Mem Gimbal. So from this, it will be understood that the main existence of the creature is the Word of God creating it. Since if the Word of God, of this energy, divine energy, is withdrawn from the, from the object, it would become total nothingness. It would be total... Now you have to burn it, you have to destroy it. It would become totally like before, nothing. So if so, Gam Achshav, even now, when the crea- creation is here, the creature is here. Call Mitzi, you say, its whole existence, who, who, Hadvar Havaye, is the, the word of God, the energy of God. That's its whole existence. Vizel Kol Mitzi, that's its whole existence. The enemy is sniffing with an atom. It's not a separate existence. Kasha alone the way it's seen to us. It looks like I'm here. This table's here. Everything over here. Yeah, God's creating it. Okay, I'll think about it. I'll understand it. But I don't see it. But if you deepen your mind deeper and deeper, it comes out. You see that what it comes out to is like this. That the origin of the world, the origin of the stone, the stone falls to the ground. Stone does not fly. Stones don't fly. The origin of the world is nothingness. The only reason why it's here, the only reason why the stone is flying is because the forces of the human force is pushing it. As soon as the human force, so is the stone flying? It's the human force that, that's making it fly. Stone and stone cannot fly. So is the world in existence? It's the force of God that's forcing it into existence. And that is true existence. On its own, the world on its own is nothing. Back to the Rambam. Therefore, only God Almighty is the true existence. Ah, you look around, so many other things exist. What is the truth of the existence of every other creature? Hashem, God Almighty. Oh. So here we're starting to appreciate a little bit of this concept of Bittl, of this concept of of uh, nullification, that the world and every creature is nullified before Hashem, before God Almighty. Now, before the Tzimtzum was, was much greater. Much greater, much greater um, nullification. Because here, at least, we're talking about the, the godliness that creates the world. But there, before the Tzimtzum, this truth, as we're going to read from Tanya, Chapter 35. Because the truth of, the, of Hashem Alekim, uh, Hashem God, uh, the uh, God of truth, what is His truth? Is His uniqueness, His, his, his unity, His own, His oneness. That He is the only one and there's nothing else besides Him. That is the essence of the truth of God's existence. There's nothing else, really. 
What do you mean there's a world? Yeah, the true, the, the true existence of the world is only godliness. So that pure truth, meaning for the, for the, for for the world to exist, you have to, so to speak, dilute that truth a little bit. That truth is too powerful for anything else to exist. But by this undiluted truth of that hu levade hu say, as he says in that God, or hu levade hu ve'enzelos belade mamash, he's the only one, there's nothing else. Literally, before that truth, nothing else could truly exist. He cannot talk about creating the world. There's nothing else. Only God is true. So therefore, when the aid and self, when the infinite light, when the pure infinite energy from God is revealed, there's no possibility, there's an out of the question about anything else, any creation, any other existence besides God. Understand? Okay. Now the truth is, So what do you mean? There's no place for, wor- for the world? There is no possibility. It's out of the question. When the truth, when the pure truth of Godliness is revealed, that Hulu Vadihu Vefes Baladimama, she's the only one and nothing else besides him. Now last time we spoke about the, the, the problem that we need the Simpson for is that the infinite light cannot, how could the infinite light, infinite light, infinite energy create a finite being? But the truth is they're both connected, it's almost the same idea. When the infinite energy is revealed, when the infinity of Godness is revealed, meaning the ultimate truth, the, 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 the pure truth, not, it's not, not watered down, not modified. The real truth of godliness is revealed. That's, that's the infinite of God. It's not limited in any way. It's just the, the pure, raw truth. There's no possibility for anything else. When godliness is somewhat limited, what does that mean? As we're going to see eventually in the next classes. That means that there is a possibility for something else. There is a possibility. You're limiting this truth. That is nothing else. And when you limit that truth, it becomes a possibility for something else to exist. This is also explained that basically that these two reasons for tzimtzum are really one concept. Is explained also in the mentioned uh, previous mentioned uh, uh, booklet from Kach Chabad by Rabbi Zalman Gopin, which today is from one of the uh, foremost teachers of Chassidus in the world. So this concept that we explained about Hashem creating the world constantly and therefore there's nothing else besides Hashem, uh, before the Tzimtzum it's much stronger, it's much more powerful. Because here at least we're talking about creation, God is creating. But really the creation... Since the creation is constantly depending, dependent on the energy that's creating it, so therefore it's, no, it does, it's not an independent existence. But before the Tzimtzum, you can't even talk about creation. You know, he can't even talk about the concept of creating something else. There's nothing, it's impossible to be something else besides God Almighty. Okay, just uh, to conclude, make this a little bit practical. <laughs> so back to Perek Lamed Hay, back to the 35th chapter of Tanya. And he's, he, it seems like he's talking about literally this level. The Eid in Sof, he's talking about Hashar Sashchina, divine, how could the, when does, where does the divine presence rest? The concept of the divine, the resting of the divine presence, is the revelation of his godliness, and his infinite light. And then he goes into explaining that the, 
that the reality of the infinite light is that there's nothing else besides him. So how could we relate to that? You hear? Sure. How can we relate to that? This is, it's impossible for a human being to relate to that on our own. The great tzaddik even, he says. Tzaddik Gomer, a complete tzaddik, that loves God with amazing passion. Still his mind cannot grasp God. Why? Because what is the, the reality of God is that only He exists, nothing else exists. If I'm going to try to grasp that with my mind, with my love, it's my understanding, it's my love, it's my existence. My existence appreciates God. But you're, you're not appreciating the, 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 the truth of God because the truth of God is that there's no existence besides Him. So how could your existence appreciate God? It's a, it's a contradiction. Right? Because it's, it's your consciousness, it's your feeling, it's your existence, it's your yeshus. Your holy existence, but still, your existence that appreciates God. The, the pure existence of God means that there's nothing else. Nothing else exists. He said, no, my existence appreciates God. <laughs> it's a contradiction one with the other. So how is it possible? You know how? To take a dime and put it in the pushka. Do a mitzvah. When you do a commandment of God, a mitzvah, that a mitzvah is the will and wisdom of God, literally His will. That's the only way you could connect with this infinite light. What means a mitzvah? A mitzvah means I will now fulfill the will of my Creator. My interest at this point is not important. It's God's interest, so to speak, is important. Right now, God's existence. Me, it's the, the, the issue is not about me. The question is not about me. I don't exist. God's will exists. And I am here to fulfill God's, to fulfill God's will. So in, in me fulfilling the will of God, you touch that reality that is nothing else besides God. Because that's a mitzvah. That's the, the core of a mitzvah means that I am here to fulfill God's will. So it's not, it's not about me. It's not me. There's nothing else besides God. Yeah. And what do you mean? I'm here. I'm here just to fulfill His will. Understood? So you want to connect with that ch truth of truths? Do a mitzvah. Learn Torah. Learning Torah is also a mitzvah. Thank you everybody for listening. Um, once again, remember, if you like the class, press like. Remember to subscribe. Thank you very much and all the best.